we'll just look over the bout, your latest bout, and then we'll look over, um, I guess you probably know who Shimei Lam is, right? Uh, I think I've heard of her. Yeah, the, the Korean fencer, the, the biggest thing is that she got, uh, Aww. she got cheated out of the, the, a medal in, a. Oh. in London, but that's whatever, but she's a kind of like you, relatively short friend group fencer, so you can hopefully get some takeaway. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, sounds cool. Then how old are you? I am 13. 13, awesome, that's good. And then, what, what kind of ambitions do you have with fencing? Kind of ambition? Ambitions. Oh, ambitions. All right. All right. Um, in fencing, so what my main goal is, um, I'm mainly fencing for, I fence for physical, um, to build up uh, physical strength. Um, also for mental thinking. Um, but I'm mainly fencing because I. I enjoy competing and I enjoy learning by seeing others. So. Okay, that's pretty humble. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully, it'll work. All right, you can see my screen, right? Yep. Awesome. And then, okay, I have this and then this. Okay, perfect. So yeah, from what I got from your dad is mm -hmm. you've usually beat this girl, right? Uh, yes, yes. Is it usually a stomp or is it usually kind of close? Um, usually, uh, like, if it was a pullout, then I'd beat her 5-3, or 5-2-3. And then what if it's a D? Um, D, E, I, I haven't fenced her in... Here. Not recently, Oh, um, I haven't... Yeah, not recently. Okay. Did you have a Did you have a game plan for going in? Um, in the beginning, I was kind of my mindset was a bit off. I was kind of freaking out when I was going to fence her. How come? Um, I think it was because I haven't fenced her in a while, so that. So she mysteriously what... like got better. Um, I think it was just me thinking that uh, she was got like way better, I guess. Okay, and did you what a uh, what, what do you think she was thinking? Maybe she was thinking the same thing, right? I maybe I don't exactly know though. Right, so don't uh, try not. This is easier said than done, but don't undercut yourself. Right, your opponent is just as scared as you are. Right, she's like, crap, I've never beaten, I haven't beaten Natasha in a while. Every pull bout she beats me. So I'm sure she was probably just as nervous as you. So yeah, in circumstances like that, it's really easy to go down a spiral. Hmm. So let's start with the bout. And go. Did you have a plan? Um, my main plan was I didn't really know what her fencing style was because I was wondering if it changed. So my original plan was to see if she was going to, what her style was, and then. Well, okay, so about. based on that, what did she, what for what, what is her style? What was her style before? Um, more passive, and then, um, since I didn't really attack, she was we were very passive fencers and. She would only attack if needed, I guess. Okay, yeah. So you want to stop hit, she wants to parry. Hmm. So 
So I would have a feeling that when you guys fan. So okay, so now I have a follow up to that is after the after all that's said and done, do you think she actually mm -hmm. changed very much? Um, I don't. I her style seemed the same to what I remember, but it felt like her technique better yeah so in times like that like don't overthink it like people don't mysteriously just go through a hyperbolic time chamber and like just become monsters All right uh, so like yeah. when was the last time you fenced her before this um i think like exactly a year okay yeah and then with covid you can't expect too much out of people especially yeah. so i think a lot of this like you you're just like in your own head before anything even started but that happens to literally everyone. But it's, I, I think you have a good head on your shoulders, so it's easy to just kind of chalk it up and like really focus on a positivism, how you're going to win, not why you might lose. Mm -hmm. huh. And in here, like she's super passive, but she's like passive, passive. Like, she she yeah. only does something when you show something. And then. Uh -huh. What I'm noticing is a lot of your feints, they're really shallow and empty. See, like, was this at any, did this have any chance of even remotely hitting or even drawing a reaction? Yeah. Oh. Right? So, right. What if it were, instead of your tip being here, it was like here? I think I would have gotten a reaction. Yeah. And if she decided to attack, which she doesn't want to do, do you think mm -hmm. he could just leave? Probably. One million percent. Okay. Alright, so here we have a, a battle of commitment issues. Yep. Just fine. So I think now you guys should get called out in one minute. Yep. Ooh, you got lucky. See, okay, yeah, so this was, like, basically the first time you went past her bell guard, and she instantly, like, just went for mm -hmm. Right, yes, yeah, except you did it kind of on her turn. So look at the, look at the feet. Mm -hmm. right, she was already, like, kind of plant like she planted her feet before you so she was already in the ready to like just plant as soon as you were flat-footed uh -huh. which like in hindsight it's like yeah thanks but right so you see she's planted and then you see how she was already planted and then you raise your foot and she went into it mm -hmm. but that being said this is the first time you went past her guard she instantly just went nuts uh -huh. right so here since this is the one where uh, I was saying earlier, as soon as you go past, you're not sure, you just leave, and you still hide room. Mm. But then, uh, like, honestly, uh, the fact that she took your blade like that and you just shoved her out of the way, good on you. So, but there's things like that, right? You don't necessarily have to be scared to do a deeper faint, because you're clearly strong enough to hold your own. Mm. Another very shallow faint. Mm -hmm. And like, I look at this faint, right? You give her a faint, and all she really does is uh, step back. Like, she just kind of steps That's back, cool. so nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Which is not good, not bad. It's just you're not getting any, like, real reactions, right? So mm -hmm. all she feels is that she has to back up, and then... That's it. She doesn't feel like she has to parry, nothing. So you're not giving her many reasons to freak out, and she's slowly pushing you to the back. So yeah. I have a feeling she's just going to push you, and then she's going to attack you when you get too close, because inevitably you have to. Oh. And you actually got it. Mm -hmm. so, wow, this is really 
really good point control. Good for you. But like Matt, like so, I think you can control outcomes like this a lot more easily. Mm -hmm. Without needing to be pushed back, right? So every time she steps forward, like you guys don't do very much. Let's see how she ends up hitting you. See, Darwin drew something out. Oh, okay. My, like, my only, like, gripe with it, right, is that they're few and far between. Uh -huh. Uh, so that's the one she was trying to get. So she's slowly choking you out, which is... Uh, I know the feeling. You get to the back, right? And all of a sudden you can't move and you're like, oh my god, please leave. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So there, what was going on through your head? So first period. Um, uh, the first touch, I was... I didn't really like the passiveness because I felt like anything... It really happen um but for the first touch i i did feel kind of crowded when she was pushing me to the back um i was told to go forward so i tried doing that in the beginning of some of these points yeah and that's like, fine because eventually like uh, the pressureful fencers right they're like you're like oh yeah i gotta stop going backwards but then you're like i'm going forward but then they just step forward anyway uh, and that's horribly relatable for anyone who finds his French grip. So how how can yeah. you? So a lot of it is like not giving any distance for free, uh. right? So more like before you get to here, you you have to start really hammering at it. So let's just watch this whole part. So here we just have like the 40 seconds of you backing up. So like this is good. There should be way more of this. Huh. But see now you just gave like three steps back. Because yeah. you're commanding respect. You're like she has to go back and re respect it. And then see every time. But you're not really holding the ground. Right. So after let's say I believe it's right here. See, so imagine here, instead of instantly backing up, you just prop your foot back. And you're like, no, I just, like, you're going to fight for this distance. Yes, yeah, so you're feeling the pressure, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like basically it's just everything before is a little too passive. So mm -hmm. basis, so th there's like two distance. See, right now you guys are about tip to tip, right? So once you're at tip to tip, you're leaving a little bit further. But once you're at tip to tip, you're at roughly one step to the hand, one uh, maybe one lunge to the toe, right? You can kind of go hand toe. That's about the max you can do. You're about a step lunge away from hand body. So you, you kind of want to, 
you need to manage the distance. You can do things even by just straight up hiding your blade to confuse them. But you need to find a way to really like penetrate past this and draw out a meaningful parry. And then once you do that, like all of a sudden every step forward she does is super scary because she can't control anything. So let's look at part two. Uh, did I? Oh, I went all the way. Do we have a third period? I think you should get it right now. Perfect. Okay, so like now we're at one one, which not bad, like not the end of the world. But already she's just like she's instantly going, and so you're already here, and I didn't see any attempt to um to even hold it off. Right, so this one here, it really spawned from nothing. Right, so there was this was just you trying to be like, please leave. <laughs> yeah. Right, so like all your feints are really shallow, so she's like, okay, there's nothing to there's nothing to respect. And then oh. here, see that was not bad, but only one, right? So even there. Right, so too too many timings based on very little info that you gave her. So she she had she had no reason to respect what you were about to do. Huh. But I like your um I like that you added tempo. Yeah, you're fencing very far. Mm. Which will only enable you to do hits like that. But, okay. like, you need to be like, yeah, you're gonna need to be able to manage it. Like, unless they commit really hard, you can't really do anything yourself. And then, so once the bout starts going downhill, you had not used, like this one, you end up having zero control. Yeah. So, like, let's imagine to do something like where. She goes two steps back, you go two, you follow, and then you do two steps backwards, she follows, you do two steps forward, she follows, and vice versa. And then at one point you do two steps back, and then you add in a third one. You can kind of force, she's still following, but then she's like, wait, this is off rhythm. And then you can kind of force a decision from her. She steps forward, then you do a real feint. Right, so your feint should be when someone is stepping forward, where the, it'll mm -hmm. force a reaction, right? Imagine she... Right, her foot's in the air, and all of a sudden, there's just like this lightning tip on her hand. But instead, a lot of them are just kind of whenever you feel like you need it, and she's ready to back up. Mm -hmm. Then she doesn't. And now it's really scary because you're like, oh no, like this is her strong point. Uh -huh. uh we'll chalk it up to camera.
So spawn from nothing. So this was mm -hmm. right. This spawn from like two little faints and then desperation, mm -hmm. right? So you're yeah. super far. Right. So you go in and then your second faint is still here. There's mm -hmm. absolutely no way. Like I'm surprised you even came close to brushing the leg. You actually get mm -hmm. it. Oh my god, you actually get it. Okay, I guess I'm eating my words, but <laughs> it um it really like in my opinion, like it was a bit lucky. Did that work? Mm -hmm. Did that work? But you went forward. Right. Now that she knows you have it in you, right? Mm -hmm. You should be able to you should be able to really drive it, drive the tip and drive it home. So a lot of this should be in, like super pressure, and then just release it. Okay. Right, so imagine like... Oh, that sucks. This is horrible imagery, but like imagine like... You know like when you're... Let's say you're swimming, right? Do you do any swimming at all? Uh, I swim in the summer. <laughs> yeah, like so like when your breathing goes off tempo, right? Um... Right, all of a sudden like you can't find your breath. Imagine the same thing in a fencing bout where you pressure release at like really awkward timing. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know when to relax or not, and all of a sudden you just throw in a flesh. So are you following the idea? Yeah. Good. That being said, so far, I think you did three fleshes. One of them hit, the other two did nothing, but like, you saw how scared she was of it. Oh. Oh, this one. Is that the floor? Let's see if we can call shenanigans. Oh, no, that was just solid. So now she's ready, though, because you, you got one, then you tried a few just for the sake of going forward, and then all of a sudden she's like, okay, fine, I will hold this repose. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got to... And a lot of these things aren't necessarily fun to practice, because you're going to go to practice, mm -hmm. and you're probably going to lose bouts for, like, probably a whole week. <laughs> All right. Also, oh, we've got a bunch of people here. Uh, James and Farron, you guys can talk if you want. James is my coach. Same flesh spawned from nothing. So, middle of the strip. Uh, I I hate actions that are done from here, because it's to, this is like rock paper scissors. If it works, it means you guess right. If it doesn't work, well, crap. Yeah. Which to me it shows you're like you're like you're getting desperate. I mean, granted three mm -hmm. seven, but honestly, three seven is nothing. Right, like you, you get one more point, it's four, seven, three points. That's a point a minute after that, right? So it's the comebacks happen relatively often. So that was awesome. Oh my god, that was the best hit I've seen all day. Look how deep you went. Uh, can I? Ah, uh, uh, VLC is not very good for frame by frame. So you went deep, then you drew something out. Hmm. Right? This is like basically what I was just basically hounding you on. Deep, and you are you like you have the legs for it. Right? And imagine now the next one. She knows that she takes your blade. She has to hmm. respect it. 
So more like just if you can. Let's see. There's other, th like, there's one more thing, though. So, uh -huh. right, imagine, because, right, one of your goals, right, uh, in theory, would be to punish that with, uh, like, a disengage forward, right? Hmm. Right, let's say instead of, like, going into it, she didn't. So, you gotta, you got to be able to feint this deeply without your back leg being so committed. Right, because yeah. here, if anything else happens the action is nothing, nothing happens, right? So you mm -hmm. should be able to see like... So right, the one scenario you wanted, which was her coming, because your front leg loaded, happened, so you get it. But if she just backs up, you can't follow. Right, so imagine a deeper feint, leg locked and loaded, but then the back leg is following with it. Right, but then instead yeah. your whole core is dropping, your tip drops, and it's really hard. <laughs> like forward only, just like how little, like your back leg is just not working at all. Mm. See, so there you fall victim of your short feint because the feint itself doesn't actually exist. Mm -hmm. uh, right? So, so you're here, right? And then your whole leg is soup. Like you've given it. Yeah, your back leg is done. It's done for the. It's done for this point. <laughs> but then, like this feint here. It's not actually deep enough to draw a reaction. So she's not even reacting to your faint. She reacts to your flesh. See, like you did a little faint here. It, it doesn't exist. Uh, she, she's just reacting to the flesh. But if you go a bit deeper, which is scary, because if they react forward, you need to be able to jump back. Like you need to be able to just absolutely hop out. But if they react how you want them to, then they react later, you have more time to react, and then it, it like it, it compounds really well. It's just that Oh. Uh it compounds really well because you end up teaching yourself to react later and then you end up teaching your opponent that they need to react later, or you're just gonna school them. No. And then I'm not seeing you like vary the uh like vary the targets. I haven't seen you try the foot, I haven't seen you try the thigh. And then all your feints are like really much in the middle. I didn't even see you try to raise your hand just to see. Right? Because mm -hmm. let's say you keep your blade out of vision, right? Low line, and then all of a sudden you give them this whole top line field of vision. They forget about low line, right? So you're very like middle ground. Same thing. Your your faint is actually in. She's in no danger of being hit. Uh. So where in your mind you're like, yeah, I did faint disengage. You actually just did faint straight straight. Uh. I'm really enjoying the persistence, though. At least you're not backing down. <laughs> oh, 
my god. If well, sometimes I we just accept that we are gonna lose, but you're like, no, if if this is happening, like it's going on my terms. <laughs> I feel like we're stuck in like the the twilight zone, just. Uh, I don't know if your coach has seen Groundhog Day, but I feel like we're in repeat. Yeah. <laughs> this happens for, I think, like 10 times, something like that. So, um, now this happens yeah, so yeah. many times, I'm a little upset at you for not just countering the action that she keeps doing. Oh. Right, so you're clearly strong enough. Like, right when she takes the parries, you're able to push back. Mm -hmm. Now you're just wasting time. Better. All right. Crispy. Almost, actually. With your arm out. Yeah, sharper tip on that, and yeah, you you were in the right. <laughs> Do you always flesh to the left? Um. Okay. So I was talking to uh. One of my teammates about this and i've been trying to flush to the right a little more yeah like there i pushed the right. so the last um, two i feel like you actually just miss huh you're like you're in the right you're in the you're in the in, in like in you had the tempo on it so two huh? points so we take away two eight so the score could be like eight seven right now huh And like, I mean, it's just not too much, like, can't be too harsh. There's 20 seconds left and you're down, like, six points, so. Yeah. I think I was, like, really mentally, like, freaked out, I guess. But don't worry, yeah. this isn't the first nor the last time. Um, fencing is, uh, definitely gets the best of us. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then the time runs out the next time I push. Ah, oh, there it is. Finally, you're going to disengage in eight. Oh. And time runs out. Yeah, so like ha half of that period, huh. like is you're trying to go, you're trying to disengage her aid or get a re reaction out of her, but mm -hmm. you're actually just going straight. This still yeah. isn't deep enough to actually threaten. Right, so it just ends up being, it, it, what it feels like a compound attack ends up, for you, or for her anyway, ends up being a one-timing parry. Mm -hmm. Right, there's no actual one, two. Your one, like, really has to get deep. Okay. To where, like, it's borderline scary, where you're like, if I miss this, I need to run. Okay. But, like, that's, like, 
it's like really good in and out, like in, and then if you miss, you just out. Right, so. Right, so that's that would be the example where if you missed, mm -hmm. and then unfortunately we don't have any examples where you go forward. Yeah. But like, just the way that reaction was drawn out, that's what you want. Like, that's the reaction you want to do a solid one, two. You're getting so deep that they have to react. Uh -huh. And then if you don't, there's no harm in like, right, you go deep and then you just take everything away. And they're like, oh my god. Right, like we're French here. We're not going to parry you. We're just going to absolutely take the blade away, leave, and then make you follow us. And then eventually they get so annoyed that they just run at us. So, right, so like, instead, I was like, this obviously we're a little close here because it's hard to get the exact frame. But instead of having your leg kind of, I'm not sure what to call this, uh, but imagine your knee followed and then your foot was still kind of flat because you've got nothing to push off of now if you needed to go this way. Oh. Uh, but obviously, like we're like uh, reviewing this stuff is also like we're living in we're living in hindsight world where we can do everything perfect a second time. But so at practice, you can just practice really deep. Right, so you're gonna have to practice this like a solid at least a week, and then just tell me what happened. Right, so you do really deep feints, and then like one day you're like, um, and anytime you don't feel it, just take everything away and try again. But then your goal is to really go in and get, then get a solid disengage. Right, so let's say your opponent's gonna do six, right? So do the motion of disengaging someone to take six. That same motion is that this is you taking eight. So you oh. can cover two bases with one action. Right? And then if, like one thing that might happen is you're going to disengage the six, they'll take four. Mm -hmm. Since you're very driven, you can actually just remise the four. So basically just angle around. So really just mm -hmm. go deep. And then once you decide to go, just commit. Mm -hmm. Now, Right, so your opponent, uh, only when they raise their foot, right? So when they step forward. Uh, let's see if we can, right? So, right, so to see how, like, these little hops, I would want oh. you to sneak in during the hop. That's when your opponent, like, right, imagine, like, mid-hop, all of a sudden there's just this tip, like, just glaring at her. She's not, like, when your foot's up, you're not in balance. Oh. Like, you need to react, so that'll draw stuff out, and then over time, you'll start to see it. Okay. So during mid-hops, you want feints to the foot? Uh, to the hand. Oh, a hand, all right. A faint, like, uh, like dirt. And then see where that goes. And then it, it'll be hard, but... Um, See if you can con then, like, the next step is controlling when people step forward. And that's where I was going earlier, where we go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then we just see who's following who, right? Oh. So you go one, two, one, two, and all of a sudden you do a third one. Oh. And you know she's going to try to follow you. That's how you can mm -hmm. control some, something like that. But also at the back of the strip, right? So you pressure, pressure, release, pressure, pressure, release. Pressure release right away. See if she follows. That's another way to control the front foot. Their front foot, that is. So a little, little thing. And obviously, like, you're not going to, like, you're not going to master this in, like, a week. But yeah. um, just practicing this consistently for, like, a month, and you'll notice that oh. you just start seeing different things. Mm -hmm. And then. Just loads and loads of footwork. Like you, I would want you to like do like a 
a half lunge where like so you do like a half lunge and then you focus on the jump back like 10 times and do a half lunge where you focus on the back leg following with the intention of going forward right and then you just practice these two scenarios half lunge jump back half lunge back leg ready ah. and then let's just skim through um a really high level korean french grip fencer but like, see, I already noticed, like, her back leg is ex extremely loaded. Oh. Sorry, you can tell, like, her tip moves around a lot. Uh-huh. And see, it's there. She kind of... She starts going in. She's not a hundred percent sure. She just takes the takes the retreat way out. Okay. See, she see how she's here. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That's scary. But she pulls out when she's oh wait. And see, she even had time like she even had time to actually completely pull her arm back and still double oh. out. Oh. And see, there's a lot of feints. There's no shame in doing more the more and more feints than you'd want. Oh, oh floor. That's signs of okay. Do you um do you toe hit much? Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, okay. Uh, do you toe hit much? Um, I don't practice toe hits, but no, I don't. Okay, so try to like just try to practice it. But what, one way to practice it is when someone steps forward, if you can lunge to their hand, you can effectively lunge to their foot. So you can kind of yeah. lunge hand, drop to the foot, leave. Um, you're a French grip fencer, like if you can't hit the foot not um you're gonna need it i think it's 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 a very necessary tool in any french grips uh, arsenal so what mm. you could do is practice just lunge to the hand drop to the foot hand foot hand foot nice so Uh, she went like, see, that was a progressive, not too deep, cool. Okay, mm -hmm. how about now? Uh. Uh, granted, I think uh, she kind of missed, but um, either way, I like, was really in her tempo. This is cool. See, like on, on th like this. Uh, forget the fact she flushes, but like, you would go hand foot, right? So like, this is what I mean on foot raise, right? So on foot mm -hmm. raise, hand faint. Huh. And then sometimes you'll notice. See here, they're basically identical, which is fine. But sometimes you'll notice your foot lands before your opponent, and that's when you're in control of the tempo. Huh. That that might be for another day because I don't want to overload you. <laughs> don't worry.
So I think this looks like just too far. Yeah, like way too far. Uh -huh. Okay, so she does that one, so she thinks she's getting a reaction. So she didn't see like so she didn't quite like she did kind of draw the reaction, but it was just a little too far. But granted, oh. like that's a superb lunge. But what's cool is that she did that uh, and like she did a feint, waited like twenty seconds, and then tried something. So that's something to keep in mind. Oh. So yeah, a lot of the, and a lot of these things like the that uh, those hand hits is just trying. There's nothing to lose. It's just that you need to have the confidence that if you get in a dangerous situation, you need to be able to leave. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, and see this? Like she's getting a little too antsy, like stepping forward. Like please leave. <laughs> That was really good. So I think she, so it looks like she kind of punished the other thing when she was going to tell her to leave, but then she just oh. stood there. So it was very smart fencing. Huh. So look at this. This is interesting. I flat footed, and then she just goes. So that's what I meant earlier with um, when you're ahead on the timing, right? She does something kind of too big. She keeps her feet on guard and she barely even moves this foot and she's ahead. No time to react. So this could have like, this could have been a double, but she was way faster on it. But this is also something you could do. Oh, so dead tip. It gets caught flat footed, oh. which is fine, but then she. Mm, she panicked. Still. But you see how, like, the mechanic, like, is it right there? Like, she instantly. Mm -hmm. Like, if she's, she's not quite ready, she instantly, like, there's instantly a little step back. Hmm. The uh, result is uh, the result is uh, irrelevant. I just want you to focus on like the mechanics of it. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh. Uh, what do you think? Like, you think you can work on that for like two, three weeks? Yeah, I think so. I'll be focusing on these things. Right, and then if you, like, you, it doesn't have to be, like, a always recorded. Like, you can just send me the videos of you where you think you're practicing it, and then I can see if, really? like, we're on the same page. Because obviously if I'm oh. telling you something and we're, like, you're understanding it differently than what I think, um, uh -huh. I, like, uh, it, it's kind of like the blind leading the blind kind of deal. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah practice these, these things specifically. So deep feints, Fazabel, at least near the fingers at a minimum. Faint, uh -huh. they're only when they raise their foot. Like mm. just watch watch people's front foot. That's how you can control when you can attack. Right? And then one, two, you just go in. And then like just work on varying the lines. Like try toe hitting, see what happens. Or right, uh, just change the lines. Toe, thigh, see what happens. Because from there, you're able to really control where your opponent is going to parry next. Make sense? Yes. Awesome. So, any uh, questions, comments, concerns? Um, I don't have any. You basically covered everything that I wanted to review. So. 
Oh, good. Yeah, nice. So, yeah, just practice that, and then I'll follow up with you uh, oh. in a little bit. And then, yeah, just keep practicing. I like. I I think you're more than strong enough to like mm -hmm. get yourself out of trouble when it gets there. But yeah. I think you should be not afraid to really get yourself in the deep end and like really start fire, like start fire, get in there, like practice hard and really like like get yourself in danger and then learn from it. Especially at practice, there's nothing wrong with that. But like you don't sound like you have too much ego or anything, so I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal. But like just get in there and like really go get those points. Okay, yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you for joining and testing this kind of concept I'm working on. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you. And then, uh, yeah, we'll talk again soon. Hey, right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.